Hello there. Hello there. What's up guys? Uh, my name is Patrick and it has been about two or three weeks since I've made like an actual uh, video with me like talking. So um, a lot has changed since I have been away. There's kind of a number of reasons why I haven't made a whole lot of videos in like three weeks. So, number one, I ended up getting an internship for the summer. Um, this was very last minute. I mean, I'm already like a month into summer. Um, but I got an awesome internship that I'm really, really enjoying so far. So it is, it's basically full time, uh, Monday through Friday. And it's just been, uh, it's been a lot of work, but I've been really, really loving it. Um, the second reason is that um, I, this car has changed quite a bit in the last three weeks, namely uh, the ECU. So this car is actually running off of a, a standalone ECU right now, a um, little thing called Mega Squirt. It's pretty huge in the Miata community. And um, the, the reason why I'm not making a huge video, like an install video or anything like that on it, is because I am very much, one, uneducated about ECUs, and I don't feel comfortable, like, explaining how to do things, and two, this install from day one, where we were taking the stock ECU out and putting this in, and then right now, where the car is actually, like, drivable, and I feel confident driving it, it's been three weeks. It's just, it's a huge time frame of, of, okay, I'm gonna start making a video now, and then three weeks later, I'll finish it. Like, that. that's really difficult to do. So I have a bunch of random clips just like, all over the place, and there's no actual like, way to, to organize them and put them in the, the right order, and, and it's just, it's really bad. So you guys didn't really get to see much of the install. Um, that sucks, but my brother ended up writing a uh, forum post, and keep in mind he is an engineer, and he is way, way better at you know wording things and working on cars and just overall being smarter about cars than I am. So I'm going to put a link into his uh, his forum post if if you're interested in how the install went, um, what exactly we did, and I'll go through it real quick. Um, so I. Got a Mega Squirt ECU. Um, this is an MS3 enhanced version, um, and this one is from MS Labs. And I got it used off of MiataTurbo.net for 900 bucks, which is a pretty good deal because I think they come for like 1300 shipped new. Um, so saved a good chunk of money there. Now with that ECU, there's a couple additions that you need to get. Um, one of them is an AFR gauge. Um, that was a pretty penny. My brother actually got me that for, I think it was like Christmas and my birthday, like combined into one. So that was pretty cool. That saved a good amount of money. Thank you, Will. Apart from that, um, you really don't need a whole lot. You need to get an IAT sensor kit, which is like 20 bucks. Um, I'll put the links to what I bought in the description. And then the most annoying thing of the entire install <laughs> is the placement of the ECU. So for NBs, it is just the worst thing in the entire world. It is under the steering column, um, right above the pedals, and it is the most cramped space in the entire world with no room to move. I can't even like fit my like arm like in there <laughs> at all. Um, it's just awful. Not to mention that you're, you're upside down working on it and it's just, it's really, really bad. So I had a lot of issues with getting the ECU to where it wouldn't fall um, because it was held with zip ties for a couple, like a week and a half. And that was really sketchy driving because if one of the cords came undone, that would have been really bad. Luckily that didn't happen. I ended up buying a singular motorsports bracket, 
which is an awful product, but it's really necessary. It's 70 bucks, it's just a piece of metal, and it took like two weeks to ship. It wasn't, was not fun, it was a stupid product, but it's very necessary. I even had to like cut parts of it, but let me walk you through what I actually did in terms of, you know, all the routing and I'll just, I'll just show you. Okay, so um, it has been, these are not the right keys. Okay, it's unlocked. Um, so it's been quite a while since I made a video on this car. Let me first explain the worst thing in the entire world, which is the placement. All right, so here we are, and right under here is in is where the ECU is located. Now, this is a horrible mess of just everything, and you can see the ECU right here. Um, it's very, very large, and I finally got to the point where it doesn't hit any of the pedals if you move them or anything, um, so that's very nice. But yeah, um, it's an awful spot, but that's just something you have to deal with unless you want to make a wiring extension for the stock uh, wiring harness, which is a lot of work and I just don't feel like doing. If I go up here, we have a vacuum line that is teed into whatever the hell this thing is. Um, this was kind of my brother's doing, I had no idea what was going on with that, but that provides vacuum to the ECU. And that simply just ran all the way right into there, right around there. You can kind of see the, uh, this is the cord. And uh, yeah, that's where the vacuum goes. Now there's one more thing that you need to do, and that is the IAT sensor right down there. This is uh, spliced into the stock, I think, math. Yes, math. Um, what used to be in the uh, intake is now just this one little um, thingamabobber. Other than that, um, the only other thing is the wideband gauge. So inside the car is not much different. I will show you the placement of the gauge because it is kind of interesting and it's very stealthy. And there it is. So it's just stashed right in the glove box. And uh, I just kind of throw it in there. And there we go. And it's important to note that this is ran to the ECU as well, which obviously provides the ECU with air fuel ratio, which is very important. We have our little connector, uh, uses a serial port, and I have a little converter that just goes into a USB. So that is a very simple explanation of the ECU and what it takes to run it. Now again, my brother's write-up is going to be in the description, so Take a look at that um, if you're interested in how the install went. Um, he did a very good write-up on just basically everything. So that was really nice. And I'll leave a list of all the items that I ended up using for this install in the description below if you're interested in you know, doing this for your own car. Uh, as you know, in terms of drivability, the car is perfect. It feels, it feels like stock, but it's just, it's, it's smoother, which is the weird thing. Is, I mean, Will tuned a good portion of it, and then uh, there's an auto-tune feature that you can use, which is what we kind of finished the tune off with. But um, yeah, no, it, it feels great. The power is super smooth. Um, even just normal, you know, partial throttle is perfect. It feels great. So overall, in terms of drivability, this car is, this car is pretty good. Now, I'm going to be playing around with a couple of features that I'm gonna make in a different video such as launch control and flat foot shifting and I might go a little bit in depth with those which I think might be good you know I'll learn some some of it and hopefully pass that knowledge on to you maybe but um, I just wanted to make a little video say that uh, I haven't forgot about YouTube my life has just gotten really really busy and yeah that's 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 it so Thank you for watching, and yeah, I'll see you guys later.